Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Yes, we got the band back together. Yay! <laughs> it feels like forever, but you've got both me and Carly once again in the same place at the same time, virtually Shocking. at least. <laughs> oh, Sorry. I missed you. I know I missed you too. I'm so glad to be back. And uh, I missed uh, everyone who is checking in already in the chat. Let's uh, run down real quick while we warm up here. Starting first in is Vince Lamb. Wishing Ooh. everyone a happy Monday. Happy Monday. Uh, uh, Carly is back. We've got D23 news. It's going to be a good day. And Michael Bingham's here, as always. Um, we're going to kick off the week with some fun. And uh, yes, uh Universal posted a video with an announcement coming this Thursday, and uh, we can talk about that uh, right off the top when we start recording. Let's do that. Yes, it's kind of crazy. I know before we go to recording, we talked this weekend, like, there's so many meaty stories this week, right? <laughs> Almost like half of the news could be the main attraction, like a theme park. We Opening yeah, is in the it, news. <laughs> it's funny because our producer sent us uh, a really long list of topics that we could talk about, and uh, we had we had to knock a, a couple off that were perfectly valid, just because uh, we would be here for a two hour show this week. Uh, so we had to pare it down a little. But uh, we've got in Derek Co's corner, Blossom and Michelangelo, um, and Weiser checking in to say hi. Uh, and uh, Brian Sager's happy that Carly is back. He's in a foodie drinky post day coma. I uh, went to a Japanese thai, thai restaurant and uh, saw Ghostbusters Frozen Ooh. Empire. Uh, I'm hearing mixed reviews on that one. I was thinking maybe seeing it uh, sometime this week. Um, I, I'm actually just rewatched Afterlife, which I uh, liked better than I remembered. Um, and I was kind of looking forward to this new one, but I am I am hearing conflicting. Yeah, same, so. same. <laughs> we shall see. We shall see. Uh, all right. Well, I think uh, we've checked in with everyone who's here in the chat. And if I can remember how we start <laughs> doing these <laughs> things, uh, we will kick this show off in three, two. Please lower your head and watch your step while boarding. Welcome to the Attractions Podcast. You are all clear from Dispatch. Have fun. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Attractions Podcast, sponsored by MEI and Mouse Fan Travel. I am Seth. And I'm Carly. And we are back together again Yay! here to talk to you about the latest and greatest in theme park news and more. But first, we have to spend a minute catching up. It has uh, been like a month since we've uh, both been on the podcast together. So uh, just briefly, tell me what I've missed in the wide world of Carly. Yes, uh, we both were ships passing in the night, spending time at Disneyland. I hit up uh, Disneyland California Adventure Food and Wine Festival. Thought it was like one of the most impressive as far as quality. Operations were so much better, at least on my day to visit, which is always my issue. Excellent. Had some excellent, excellent bites. And I also hit up Disney Channel Night, the first ever oh, one. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about that. Um, I, I, I read all about it. What was it like being there? Yes, um, I'm definitely too old for the target <laughs> audience. <laughs> so that was, it's definitely hyper focused on if you are like, I love High School Musical and Zombies. So <laughs> I will say the mashup for the parade was a highlight for me, but that was a highlight because I love that. It's definitely for a certain audience, pretty awesome. I'm sure they'll do it again or something like it, but you definitely have to be like the right fandom for it but i had a nice night out with friends the characters were okay you know it was a lot of stuff that we have seen before so that was like the one kind of bummer but the entertainment was really good from there i went to dollywood where i got to do a sit down interview with dolly parton yes can i touch you yes <laughs> the queen herself what, what um, an amazing experience uh yes. can you can you tease us uh anything at all from the art did you get anything related to dollywood or related to theme parks that you can give us just a little tidbit absolutely yeah so my story is going to be tied to the upcoming dolly parton experience which is opening okay. in may at dollywood which is kind of like 
you know, like those Van Gogh interactive museum experiences, like that Badali. So this is going to be fan serving, but also really like a deep dive into her life. And also what I loved a lot is the people behind the scenes that she brings along the way with her that people don't realize like a bunch of her family works at the park. One of her nieces has her own show at the park. So mm. that's kind of what I love. And the exhibit also highlights those people and, you know, the costume designers, all the things that, you know, make her who she is. So I am really excited about that. And then I went to Italy uh, right after that. So. And, and, and one more thing, you went yes. to Italy Just a range as of one does as one does. So how was yeah. that? It was amazing. This is definitely, if you are thinking of, I don't like going to Europe in the summer because it's too hot and there's no air conditioning in places. So this is like my favorite time to go is in like early March or October where the weather is like beautiful. It's like a perfect fall day and it's also pre-tourist. So mm. uh, like mm. Brian said, food coma, I am definitely in one. The food is just so amazing, but wow. I'm happy to be back taking a few weeks sabbatical from traveling and then up to my old shenanigans. <laughs> well, welcome home. I hope you get some Thank much you. deserved rest. And yes, uh, I, can't, I uh, can't it wait. was jet lagged this weekend. I was in and out of consciousness for two days. <laughs> uh, yeah, I can, I can imagine. I would just crawl into a, a cave and, <laughs> and sleep it off for a week. Uh, yeah. I did not have nearly as exciting a uh, time as you uh, since I came back from California. Um, I have had a family in town, though, visiting uh, the theme parks. So I, it was a perfect opportunity uh, to test out some of the touring plans from my unofficial guides uh, designed for families with small kids and tweens. Um, and uh, I was, uh, you know, I, uh, I focus a lot of times on the big e-tickets and the, you know, the really thrilling rides. And uh, it's nice to slow down and experience the theme parks through uh, smaller eyes. Mm -hmm. uh, kid, kids are going to be interested in what they're interested in. Whatever plan you have will go out the window. If they see a stilt walker with Mardi Gras coins to give out, uh, it doesn't matter how long that line is, they will stop and wait to get those Mardi Gras coins. Absolutely. Or, you know. I mean, I feel for the parents that book a resort with like an amazing pool and then the kids don't want to leave the pool because they just spent a thousand dollars on tickets. But it's like, I know we don't have kids, so we can't exactly relate, but I know the struggle because it is very real and that could happen at any moment. Yeah. I mean, the, the, it really reinforced some of the tips uh, that I've had in the books for years, but uh, been a while since I've like lived them first person. Like if you're going through, do, do, if you're going during a busy season, especially at Universal, it's worth paying for those uh, hotel rooms that come with the express passes. Um, uh, especially if you have kids that like might melt down uh, randomly and you need to just go uh, when you need to go. Um, you don't want to be investing hours standing in a queue uh, and then having them nope out. Um, and, uh, you know, sometimes absolutely the best thing is to just leave the park and go back to the hotel pool. Um, that's <laughs> a lot of fun. Right. And that's, the, I mean, I love all the Universal Hotels love them all but if you're doing that i think stay at royal pacific which is usually like the that, least expensive that's exactly where they were and it great was great pool i mm -hmm. mean yep so good yeah royal i absolutely i recommend uh royal pacific to families if you can afford it uh if you can't uh cabana bay is probably the the next best thing with the lazy river but any pool will do with the child any pool I mean, will do true. absolutely it could, a it puddle a, a puddle could yeah. do <laughs> and you know what like it, as I approach elder age, just having like a few hours to sit down really does make all the difference. And I feel like Amen. I'm the energizer bunny. Oh, go, go, go. Uh, that's the other thing. Uh, table service reservations just for one lunch. Day. One a day. You know, a, a nice long lunch in air conditioning with someone, you know, fetching your food for you instead of you uh, standing in line mm -hmm. uh, makes a whole, uh, makes a big difference for sure. Absolutely. Uh, and then these are all these nuances that it's... Yeah so easy to get lost in the confusion and the excitement. Mm -hmm. I know people will like go booking crazy. It's breakfast, lunch, dinner. It's like, don't yep. do that. Just one and then chill. But uh, I think I, the kids had a great time. And so, oh, speaking of Universal, uh, yes. before we move on, we got to <gasps> talk something. Uh, Universal put out a little tease today on Twitter. Uh, there's a short video, uh, basically nothing but a starry background 
and the date of March 28th, uh, which yeah. is coming up real soon. So uh, do you have any uh, theories, rumors, or speculations? Uh, yeah. Because <laughs> I, I know think, I do. So, I mean, we know so many details already because mm -hmm. they did that huge announcement. Well, I think mm -hmm. Disney announced their 2025 vacation packages historically earlier than they usually do. They mm -hmm. usually don't announce till June. So my guess is really not that ex like, it's not really like really well to do knowledge. It's just, I think it will be either like an opening date or an on sale date for tickets. Oh. I mean, I don't know what, I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> I mean, I think, uh, first of all, we should clarify. I think we both agree this has to do with the Epic Universe. Oh, that yes. story background oh, yeah. is I, I mean, used, I uh, feel like with the promo, <clears throat> I mean, I'm looking at like promo materials next to me. It's like in that stars and, you know. Yeah, all the, the yeah. Epic Universe logo stuff has mm -hmm. had that star field in the background. So right. this is not a a, a DreamWorks, DreamWorks. <laughs> announcement. <laughs> or Imagine. Halloween, or Halloween Horror. Everyone wants Halloween Horror Nights. Uh, right. We're not going to get Halloween Horror Nights for a little bit, I, I think. Uh, no. Because so what do you think? I think that it is an Epic Universe announcement, but I think that just like we had a Celestial Park announcement, this will be an announcement for the next land. I don't think that we'll get that full final Ooh. like opening date and tickets until a little closer to the summer because I think they want to build the hype more. But I think we're going to get a land. Um, and I... I had thought we were going to get uh, a Mario, a Super Nintendo World, um, you know, detailed announcement um, back on Mario Day. And we didn't. 10, yeah. um, so if we're not getting Mario, I think uh, my guess uh, based on rumors and whispers is uh, how to train your dragon. But uh, we will find out in just a couple days. So yes, we'll it's see. interesting, we'll you know, see. because... People do that come to Orlando maybe once a year. They plan super far in advance. Mm -hmm. So that's the only reason why it kind of went to like an yeah. on sale date or something because Disney's already in that horse race early because yeah. they know what's coming next year. But I mean, of course, you can cancel your vacation packages at any time and say, mm -hmm. oh, well, if Epic Universe is opening, I want to go there instead. Well, you know, I think a lot of people are looking at you know, the aerial shots and seeing how far along everything looks like it is and yeah. expecting, oh, this is going to open early spring. And I I really think they're going to, you know, they, they did remove the summer uh, from the, mm -hmm. they, they just say it's sometime this year. Yeah, 2025. Um, but I, I still think that it's going to be a little, the official opening day is going to be later than people expect because I think there's going to be a long period of testing, Absolutely. previews, uh, TMs, play previews, APs, APs. exactly. Mm -hmm. They're going to have that for a long time before we get a, an official opening date because uh, well, they're going to want everything to be oh, uh, yeah. thoroughly tested. Before yes, I mean, the pressure is on. You know, we've talked about this, the first theme park to open in Orlando in over 20 years. Mm -hmm. The state, like global-wise, all eyes are on them. So they really only have one chance to do it right. Yep. So like I could see like five months of previews and all that and whatnot mm -hmm. because they have such an amazing opportunity yeah. with this. So, I mean, yeah, we're it's going to be going to be interesting i love following along yeah very exciting time all right so uh without any further ado it is time for us to jump into the news in the queue We are going to start out in Anaheim at Disneyland, where they have just announced that two new Princess and the Frog themed shops are coming to Critter Country. And in the process, have kind of confirmed that Critter Country is definitely staying as Critter Country. I mean, uh, it makes sense. I mean, there's critters is the, is the one of the main characters. Exactly. There. They, you know, they keep using uh, in press releases talking critters. about all the characters we're yes. going to see in, in the new mm -hmm. ride critters. Um, you know, there was question, well, uh, since Princess and the Frog is set in New Orleans, does that mean that the former Splash Mountain is now part of New Orleans Square? But no, it's still Critter Country. Winnie the Pooh is still sticking around. Uh, but... Um, if you want to experience the current Critter Country, you better do it real soon. 
uh, because as of May 1st, that entire land is going to temporarily close down until the transformation of Tiana's bio-adventure and the surrounding area is complete. Yes, and I know when this was announced, a lot of people were, oh my God, what is going to happen to my favorite snack? Um, <laughs> Tigger tails. Yeah. So there, it's not my favorite snack, I will yes. say. It's like of the snacks at Disneyland, this pales in comparison to some other great ones, but I know a lot of people love them and they are very cute. They are adorable. Um, those are the uh, marshmallow sticks covered in orange sugar. Mm -hmm. um, and they will still be available um, at the uh, um, Pooh's Corner, Corner uh, yeah. which will partially remain. Basically, what is now Pooh's Corner, the large Pooh gift shop, is going to be split in two. Uh, the half that's towards... Uh, the exit of Tiana's Bio Adventure is going to be rethemed as Louis Critter Club. Um, and that's going to have apparel, accessories, decor, and more stuff with Tiana. The other side that has the treats is still going to be Pooh's Corner, still going to have those Tigger Tails. Um, I They also used to have these amazing pineapple spears dipped yes. in chocolate and chocolate, they occasionally yep. have them seasonally but they don't really mm -hmm. have them much anymore i miss those um and the other uh princess and the frog shop that is coming is ray's berets uh that uh is currently called the briar patch uh and that's gonna have hats uh clothes toys uh and more stuff like that uh, and it's themed after the Firefly Ray. I don't, if this is a sequel, um, is, is Ray still with us? I don't know. Is Ray, Ray get reincarnated? Is that, <laughs> did I miss that in the post credits? Because, or I maybe this I is like a memorial shop, um, <laughs> like in his honor. <laughs> oh, All right. <laughs> it's been a while since I've watched the movie. I just remember being really sad about Ray. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> Uh, this is all part of Tiana's Bio Adventure, of course, which is coming late 2024, um, presumably after we get the Magic Kingdom version opening sometime this summer. We've got lots of great coverage about the upcoming ride on our website and on our YouTube channel. Yes, hopefully we'll know soon-ish, but we'll we'll be riding all Disney Worlds first anyway, so... For sure. Yeah. Disney World will definitely come first. In fact, just saw uh, footage on social yeah. media of the first boat of uh, ride and adjust testing folks uh, in, in safety vests and ponchos uh, taking the first dip. And uh, yeah, the ride works. Still works. Right. <laughs> Still works. Work. Still works. Can't wait. Um, let's also talk while we are out in Disneyland about Season of the Force, which is the Star Wars celebration that returns April 5th through June 2nd to Disneyland Park. And it's got some new additions that uh, I would love to experience. Um, first and foremost, uh, hi Hyperspace Mountains coming back, of course. So great. Uh, I love that overlay. Um, great effects and you know the, it's permanently hyperspace mountain in hong kong uh but it doesn't look nearly as good in hong kong even though it should be exactly the same uh the disneyland one just hits different um well, the, we've also, all... new zealand uh space mountain is so good <laughs> I mean, oh just... well, yeah absolutely my yeah my Best. favorite other other than the uh paris version which is totally totally different totally uh, different i yeah. i think uh yeah i like that's, disneyland... I think that's just because we have an affinity for that time period and style sure <laughs> but even even time period alone like disneyland space mountain just knocks disney worlds out of right the... i just i can't my back can't do Disney World much anymore. <laughs> no. All right. So, but what I was really excited about is this Fire of the Rising Moons, uh, which is the first time that they have had full on uh, Star Wars music playing around inside Galaxy's Edge, not just in that little transition tunnel where you hear the 30 seconds of music that John right. Williams won a, a, an award for, uh, but like, real Star Wars score synced up to the Disneyland fireworks that are seen in the rest of the park. Right. Uh, and so like for context, for those that aren't familiar, like this mm -hmm. has been a favorite spot to watch them already yes. for a lot of regulars and locals, because obviously you don't hear the soundtrack, yeah. but you can also like tune it up to like a YouTube video with the music if you want. 
but it does offer a perfect view if you just want to see the fireworks. So the fact that they're doing this feels like a response to guests. I don't know. I mean, I think it's wonderful. Yeah, I I think it's awesome. Uh, personally, in my book, I've recommended uh, bringing uh, the original uh, trilogy uh, soundtrack uh, on your digital device and listen to uh, Yub Nub uh, from the OG uh, version of Return of the Jedi while the fireworks going go off. Um, I doubt they will use that song, uh, but I'm sure uh, it'll be really cool, especially the way that they are doing apparently three different versions synced to the three different fireworks shows that are happening uh, over the cool. summer. Yeah, and if you want to get some jump scares, you wear Magic Band Plus and have some special effects. <laughs> yeah, every oh my gosh, wearing wearing that around uh, the park, uh, around Animal Kingdom yesterday, I keep forgetting. You know, every time you walk past one of those statues and your arm starts vibrating, it's like, oh wait, what was that? It always happens when I'm by myself Never too, forget. so I look like an insane person. <laughs> All right. Other things that are part of the celebration uh, include uh, new merchandise. Um, they got some uh, Star Tours jackets that look pretty spiffy. Uh, of course, themed beverages <coughs> and collectibles. The one that I just saw on social media, uh, media is a um, collectible Jabba the Hut. Uh, I think it's a, a popcorn bucket. Yes, popcorn uh, yeah, bucket. with so a little salacious crumb. Just came out like yeah. this morning, so. Yep. Uh, and also some highlights. They're bringing some cocktails from Galactic Star Cruiser to Oga's Cantina. Oh, wow. And that includes the collectible glassware. And it is really good collectible glassware. You have to look up in the foodie wow. guide that just came out. There's also a Grogu macaron, like a little Aww. French macaron with the ears. It's adorable. So take a look at the foodie guide that just came out and was posted on Instagram because there's some good stuff. But the collectible glassware from Star Cruiser That's... is going to be... Woo. Yeah, if you I'll could not, uh, if you were not lucky enough to go on Star Cruiser, you can fool people into thinking you did. Exactly. I, uh, <laughs> uh, they've also got some season of the Force magic shots, uh, little uh, holograms uh, of the Mandalorian and Grogu uh, available with PhotoPass lenses, um, and uh, you got to attend the Disney Channel uh, night. Uh, they are doing a Disneyland After Dark Star Wars night. Select nights from April 16th through May 9th, uh, but not on May the 4th. No, um, that's very interesting. And I believe there's so many nights of the Star Wars night, there's still a chunk that are still available. Oh, really? Well, tickets start at uh, 159 per guest. Um, so if you want to uh, be able to dress up in the park uh, as an adult, uh, which is uh, something normally not allowed. Always. I and... will say at Disney Channel night, that was the best part was about... 99% of people were dressed up. Wow. And they, that start, they started filing, you know, early with like the mix in. And uh -huh. I'm just here every three seconds, Wildcats. And like everyone like salutes each other. So, wow. I am not a huge Star Wars person, but I love the world. That yeah. is going to be some good people watching. Um, be beware of lightsabers. There are oh. going to be a lot of lightsabers oh, being yeah. swung around. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, this joins, of course, the Star Wars experiences that are available in the park throughout the year. Uh, finally, we have to talk about Star Tours. Um, yes. In addition to Disneyland uh, on April 5th, uh, they are also going to uh, be adding um, new recruits uh and a new planet to star tours destinations um at both disneyland and also in um uh walt disney world but uh, i don't think they're doing it yet in tokyo um i think uh i think it was just disneyland paris that was also on that list oh but disneyland but paris yeah, was the third location yeah yeah um so we've got uh we've got photos uh cassie and andor uh, or sorry <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, Andor Cassian from the show Andor, uh, Ahsoka Tano, uh, Jin Jaren, and Grogu uh, will all be uh, appearing in transmissions. Uh, now, this is interesting because we've got these photos that uh, kind of show them like three-quarter body shots uh, in different locations. Previously, all the transition transmissions that are in the ride are full-body holograms. So I don't know if this is just uh, a promo oh, shot yeah. and doesn't really reflect what we'll see. 
Uh, also, uh, this is interesting. Um, so initially they announced that the uh, planet that we would be getting uh, to visit was Peridia from Ahsoka, um, but they actually updated uh, the blog post. Uh, it now says it's the planet Cetos. I think someone got their Star Wars planets uh, mixed up initially. It happens uh, to the best of us. So. Uh, it is almost impossible to keep up. Uh, just, just to be clear, uh, Cetos is, uh, they're both from the end of the Ahsoka series that was recently on Disney+. Plus. Cetos, where we're going to be going, it was the cloudy planet with where all the space whales started out and then they uh, kind of rode the space whales to uh, Peridia which is the uh, home planet of the dark sisters I, I can't something I don't know straight. <laughs> anyway um, so yes we will be we will be seeing space whales uh, that's the important part space Big whales. <laughs> yeah space whales it's about the space whales uh, um, I mean, the bottom of the line is if you're a Star Wars fan this is your time to shine <laughs> yes, uh, so these will be appearing, uh, kicking off on April 5th, uh, but uh, while the rest of the season of the Force ends on June 2nd, uh, those new this segments for Star Tours will continue. What I'm curious about is, uh, right now, Star Tours, when you go and ride Star Tours, you either get segments randomized from episodes uh, 1 through 6, uh, which is the prequels in the original trilogy, or you get stuff from uh, seven through nine, the sequels. I'm curious how they're going to slot these in. Uh, Ahsoka and Mandalorian kind of take place, uh, their series take place five years after Return of the Jedi, so it could go more with those. Um, or they could technically go with the sequels because who knows they could still be around 25 years later right exactly. but uh yeah, there's a lot they could do but uh cassian um yeah andor uh he he doesn't make it uh to episode four uh spoiler alert so uh no. if they have him showing up uh with the sequel trilogy uh maybe he was part of a cloning experiment maybe um as they said of <laughs> as they said of emperor palpatine somehow he's returned <laughs> such great writing okay moving on uh walt disney world uh not being left out of the fun they are announcing a whole bunch of summer offerings uh the first one we're going to talk about is a brand new drone show that's going to be soaring above disney springs from may 24th through september 2nd uh, and you don't even have to pay to see this Disney show. It is going to be free for everyone to experience. Uh, the only th thing you have to pay is uh, having to choose whether to park in the orange or orange. lime garage. Orange. <laughs> it's always orange. It's a personal choice that everyone has to make. <laughs> no, but this is really exciting. Um, a lot of people didn't know that there was a drone show. At yes. I loved it. I loved watching it from the back of the boathouse. Mm -hmm. um, so it is a long time coming. That was fabulous. It was called Star Ride Holidays. If anyone yes. remembers it, it was way so back in 2016. I can't believe that's been nearly a decade. Like that's, that's crazy. Yeah. Um, I think that original one was a partnership with maybe Intel. Um, uh, Disney. I assume by now Disney has developed their tech that they can do these uh, drone shows in house, or maybe they've partnered uh, with one of the companies to do it. But uh, we don't have a lot of details other that will showcase disney stories that celebrate the joy of flight so uh pretty sure peter pan's gonna be in there somehow um and uh featuring state-of-the-art choreographed drones accompanied by music and memorable disney quotes um the disney's kind of been on a drone roll everywhere but here um they've had uh this disney electrical sky parade in paris along with the Avengers Power of the Night drone show at, at the Paris Studios. It looks just amazing. Yeah, um, I mean, the issue with Disney parks domestically is this, the land. I mean, you have to mm -hmm. have all these drones, have to have the space. And the parks that we've Wait. seen in America that have done drone shows, like Holiday World, Dollywood, have the gift of lots of wide wait 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 wait! i thought walt said we had the blessing of size i mean i get it at disneyland it's a little tricky at disneyland that is the problem but hey hey you want to talk about space though uh universal hollywood is 
on the top of a mountain with that like a true. golf course and neighbors on all side, they still managed to do drones. Uh, their dark arts of Hogwarts castle show uh, had drones. Uh, you, the only way you can see those drones know though is in videos on our mm -hmm. YouTube channel because I'm hearing that show has been retired. I think they are developing a new show, which might also involve drones. Who knows? Uh, but I think a new show is coming to Hogwarts Castle in both uh, Orlando and California. Meantime, California did bring back the nighttime lights, uh, but that one's just lights. No, uh, no drones in that one. Right. Yeah. This so, is like all we hear are drones now. I feel like yeah, every. It'll, I'll be excited. I mean, I, I'm I'm excited to see it. Uh, I remember really liking that holiday show, and it will be great to see something back. Um, Absolutely. This, so that's running this summer at Disney Springs, and then the other Disney parks also have some exciting summer announcements. Um, starting with Epcot, which is finally, finally. Finally finishing Finally. off <laughs> what uh, used to be, um, well, it was Once Upon a Time Communicore, and now it's going to be Communicore Hall and Communicore Plaza. Construction walls finally coming down around the new Festival Center, which will open on June 10th, 2024. Uh, and we're finally going to have an indoor air-conditioned location uh, for festival events again. Oh, and those were my favorite bathrooms over there. So I'm really happy to have that space back. <laughs> uh, yes. And it will, um, it will, uh, also include, uh, the unveiling of a new Mickey Mouse meet and greet location, um, some more landscaping and a mural. Uh, yeah. so finally putting the, Finishing touches on the real rebuilt of the uh, center of Epcot. Yeah, uh, I just love the exterior of it. I mean, just from seeing them in the construction phases and now the final artwork rendering, it looks really cool. And um, this area also has the Communicore Plaza stage, which is kind of like an indoor outdoor sort of space. It looks like it's uh, it's covered, but also open air. Um, and yeah, it's hard to tell if this back wall is like a digital projection or if that's actual trees. So not entirely certain on that. But we do know that it will be home to Celebracion Encanto, a new sing-along featuring the songs and story of Encanto. Uh, so while we wait for that Encanto attraction, which may or may not be coming to Animal Kingdom, uh, in the meantime, from June 10th through September 6th, uh, we can at least celebrate the music with this live show. Yes, you can see Bruno. <laughs> <laughs> we don't talk about that. We don't talk about him, but we will see him. <laughs> um, and uh, if you are over at Disney Hollywood Studios, uh, uh, we are bursting with joy over the arrival or of Or maybe it's joy. anxiety. Oh, yeah, maybe. <laughs> I'm just angry. I'm just filled with <laughs> disgust. Um, yes, uh, so... Uh, the pix the lineup of Pixar characters that you can meet uh, over at Pixar Plaza in the studios is going to be increased by one when Joy starts doing meet and greets uh, starting on June 10th, um, just in time for the June 14th premiere of Inside Out 2. Yes, and Pixar Plaza is honestly become one of my favorite places in the studios because it's so tucked away. That there's like never anyone over there and you could do a full photo shoot with the ball with Edna mode. And I'm like, I never see a lot of people yeah. hanging around there. Honestly, since they closed off that entrance, it used to be the entrance to toy story mania yeah. way back in the day. And then, uh, and then you could walk through to the, uh, tier, um, the, the studio tour tram tour. Um, and since they turned into a dead end, dead I, end. I honestly have never gone back there. Uh, I always wonderful. just bypass it. <laughs> the Edna Mode meet and greet is in the coldest building I've ever experienced. <laughs> the cold, like I love a cold building. It is freezing cold in there. So I have so many like sweaty photo shoots <laughs> with Edna because it's just so cold in there. So if you have a kid and you just need to cool down, go just do need that. to chill out. That's the place it to go. wonderful. Uh, finally, uh, Animal Kingdom is going to be celebrating 30 years of the Lion King. Oh, my gosh. I can literally remember uh, seeing it on opening day when I was in college. 
30 years. Wow. Wild. Um, June 10th through September 6th. Uh, join in the fun uh, with a new merchandise collection, special menu items, and an adorable popcorn bucket shaped like Pumbaa. If you've always wanted to eat popcorn out of a warthog's behind, now is your chance. <laughs> There's some real interesting uh, popcorn buckets coming out with the jab of the hut now. I know they're and they're going pretty extreme. Thriving. <laughs> uh, you're going to get to do a relatively rare meet and greet with Timon and Rafiki over at Rafiki's Planet Watch. Uh, and uh, while you're at it, take in a viewing of Festival of the Lion King. I did that yesterday. First time I'd seen the Orlando version since i saw the hong kong version and the hong kong version in terms of the the scale of it is super impressive mm -hmm. but i forgot you know that they've been doing basically the same blocking the same script in orlando now for like 25 years yeah and they still go hard every show i mean those those tumble monkey acrobats those singers those dancers they still are performing every show like like it's the first time that the audience has seen it. Um, right. And like that cast has a particular pride, which is like yeah. not pun, not in, pun not intended. Like, they're very prideful of that position. Pun, pun so. intended. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, um, for uh, more and to plan your uh, Walt Disney World trip, uh, just check out our friends at MEI and Mouse Fan. All right. Um, Speaking of planning for Disney trips, uh, if you are a Disney cruise fan, you're going to want to start thinking about your first trip on the next Disney Cruise Line ship, which will be called Disney Destiny. And it is going for a new heroes and villains theme uh, featuring Hercules, Lion King, and Dalmatians, and more epic tales from Disney, Pixar, and Marvel. Yes. Notably absent is Star Wars, but... Uh, I noticed that. No mention yet of Star Wars. But, I mean, maybe that could be a separate announcement another time, because sure. the quote in there talks about, like, go walking the line between good and evil, and it's, like, just such a Star mm -hmm. Wars thing, obviously. So Ab Absolutely. We'll <laughs> Regardless, um, it's exciting, because what if we have 101 Dalmatians bar? You know, like, this is <laughs> wild. <laughs> oh, like, uh, like, Corella DeVille's Lounge? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I can, I can see that. Um, well, yes. Uh, so, um, this is uh, the sister ship of the Disney Wish and the Disney Treasure. Um, and it is going to, as we mentioned, have a heroes and villains theme uh, featuring beloved Disney animation stories as well as Marvel characters. And I love this kind of mashup between Disney and Marvel that's going to be featured in the ship's bows filigree artwork. Uh, it's mini, basically Minnie Mouse as Captain Marvel, uh, striking yeah. a superhero pose with uh, a cape flying through the air. Um, so she's kind of the, uh, the representative. Uh, her image is on the coin that was uh, put in the milestone key laying, keel laying ceremony uh that uh, took place in the german shipyard uh, where these ships are built um and hard to believe this is scheduled uh to be completed already in 2025 i feel like we have these ships coming out one after another it after another it is crazy so we just had the wish essentially we have the treasure coming up this mm -hmm. year this next year and also disney adventure which is the asian ship so yes. it is and then also their new island in the bahamas it's like what a glow up in a short amount of time, especially considering for 20, they're 25 years now. And it took like a lot of years before the wish, you know, they brought a new ship. I mean, they, so. they started very slow. Very, yeah. They took a long time to make sure that they really, really got it right. But once they decide to expand, uh, they have wasted no time. Um, Absolutely. But I mean, I guess they did it right. You know, they've built such a Disney cruise line fans are hardcore and very loyal Mm -hmm. So I guess that's the way to do it is have that slow build and build that brand loyalty and now go guns blazing. So uh, this is just kind of the first reveal of the theme with not a lot of details about the exact features on this ship. But there is a really cool uh, animated video uh, that you can watch on YouTube. And our friends at MEI Travel will get you uh ready to go when they finally uh release details on how to book these yes. very exciting 
All right. Uh, we are going to turn away from Disney for a second <gasps> and instead head to Legoland California Resort that just celebrated its 25th birthday by opening Dino Valley, uh, a new area that uh, features two rethemed rides, an old favorite, new costume characters, uh, and a lot of kid-friendly dino-themed fun. Yes, I love this. I mean, what kid doesn't love dinosaurs? You know, so it's like right. a very natural choice to go into this direction. And they had a lot of fun, uh, like activations. I think they had like the world's largest dinosaur party. Just mm -hmm. some of really crazy stuff leading into this. Um, well, as always, uh, Legoland goes big uh, with their new lands. And this one features more than 30 Lego models, uh, including a T-Rex that's 11 feet tall. Uh, and you can find him in the Explorer River Quest, uh, which is a retheme of their former uh, slow-moving scenic boat ride. Um, it is basically like the the Lego equivalent of Jurassic Park River Adventure um, <laughs> without any drops. Um, I you know, I wish I wish uh, I, I, I obviously haven't been there in person. I did watch a POV video and uh, it's got really cute um, decoration, really these great lego models that are made up of hundreds of thousands of actual lego bricks um, i wish there was a little bit more animation to some of the figures um, but uh you know for the target audience it's it's perfect right and it's like honestly everyone is the target audience because <laughs> we i love lego land i love sure. all the lego parks because i just stare at everything and gawk you know so yeah um, in addition to uh, that headliner ride, they've also got uh, Duplo Little Dino Trail. Uh, and this is, uh, they've taken uh, what was a safari ride and turned it into a dinosaur safari. And kids get to hold these cameras and basically snap, shoot at the uh, dinos as they pass by. I hope whoever is uh, designing a Pokemon Snap ride for Universal, hopefully, is paying attention to this because uh, this is exactly what I would want to see right. in that. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, Coastersaurus has uh, been around for a while uh, and it is uh, still thrilling uh, Little Ones, uh, perfect starter roller coaster, uh, the one they have in California is a steel model as opposed to the wooden coaster that uh, we have by the same name here in Florida. Um, and uh, of course, uh, it wouldn't be a Lego uh, expansion without an area where you can just play with bricks, uh, tables full of bricks, and uh, you can uh, search for fossils in the dino dig area or play with Duplo, uh, lots of interactive activities to keep the kids occupied. Great park for little ones. Um, and if you are staying at the Legoland Hotel or the Legoland Castle Hotel, you're going to get exclusive early morning access uh, to the Dino Valley uh, for an hour before its 10 a.m. opening to the general public. Um, if uh, that's on days when the park is open past six, or, or you'll get a half hour uh, if days it uh, closes at five. So uh, head on over to legoland.com slash California for more info and uh, check out the video we have on our YouTube yes. channel of that world record, yes. world's largest dinosaur costume Crazy. party. <laughs> All these people in those uh, walk around, blow up uh, T-Rex <laughs> costumes. Love it. Love it. Uh, it's great. All right. Um, now for something completely different. Uh, the first Mattel Adventure Park uh, is not yet open. It's scheduled Correct. to open later this year, but they have already open, uh, announced, announced plans uh, for another one. Uh, Mattel Adventure Park Kansas City coming to Bonner Springs, Kansas in 2026 which seems like it's right around the corner. Um, it is, but I will say a lot of it is clone attractions. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, like the Barbie dream house, a lot of the Mattel stuff, a lot of it is clone attractions. Yeah. So maybe that, that, that's, oh, I mean, yeah. 
it's like you know two for the price of one you put the r d into one and you just make two of everything uh that's actually what uh disney did when they built the original haunted mansion mm -hmm. uh, in disneyland they built the one for walt disney world at the exact same time because it was cheaper that way and uh maybe who knows maybe this was in the plans all along or uh but this will be the second theme park from mattel and epic resort destinations uh, and the lineup, as you mentioned, is just the same as the park that is coming to Glendale, Arizona, which we have talked before uh, about uh, two Hot Wheels themed roller coasters, a Barbie rooftop restaurant and bar um, on top of the, the Barbie Dream, sorry, Barbie Beach House. I keep um, saying Barbie Dream House too. I, so I know, I it's, I it's like burned in my brain, but it's the Barbie Beach House um, and a Barbie uh, themed flying theater simulator uh among other attractions personally i'm i'm all for the he-man versus skeletor laser tag inside yes, that sounds really fun. yeah that's what i'm looking forward to but uh if you're more into thomas the tank engine and friends he will be there too um all the same attractions we've talked about before for the arizona park um come into kansas city sometime yeah. in 2026 so absolutely uh, i mean the middle of the country is where all these new parks are yep. going. It's very cool. Very cool. Yep. To see. Um, all right. And for the, uh, and that, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> that is the last piece of news in our queue. Uh, so before we jump into our main attraction, it's now time to hear a word from our sponsors. The Attractions Podcast is brought to you by MEI and Mouse Fan Travel. Whether your next vacation is a magical trip to the theme parks, an exciting adventure to the pyramids of Egypt, or just a relaxing cruise on the turquoise waters of the Bahamas, MEI Travel provides premium service and expert advice to help you get the most of your vacation. They are always free of any hidden fees or costs to you. Visit them at mei-travel.com. It's time for the main attraction! And for this week's main attraction, the details have been revealed for this year's D23 Ultimate Disney Fan Event in Anaheim, California. It is happening on August 9th through the 11th, and it is a packed event. Uh, and they have made some interesting changes to the way guests will experience it this year. Yeah, so it is earlier than usual. Usually it's mm -hmm. around like Labor Day weekend. Now mm -hmm. it's in early August. Which um, is smart because that is a slow time of year for the parks. Right. Uh, we've seen that summer used to be peak and then fall was slower because of school mm -hmm. schedules. Now people don't want to go during the summer because it's really hot. And with Halloween you know, events uh, by Labor Day, the park is packed. So I think that's that's a smart move for them. Absolutely. Um, the interesting thing is we know this already, but for the first time ever, they're going to be doing three nights at the Honda Center. So yes. you're going to be taking a little shuttle from the Anaheim yep. Convention Center for free at least. We'll see how logistics work over to the Honda Center, which is close by. Yeah. Uh, the good news is this means that if you have a ticket that includes the Honda Center, then you should not have to worry about standing in long lines to get into the panels. You should have a guaranteed seat. Uh, the bad news is uh, that uh, you'll have to carefully check which kind of ticket you are getting because not all tickets are going to include access to the evening programming. So if that's important to you, uh, the regular fan passes uh, are not going to include, by default, uh, the access to the Honda Center. That you will need one of the ultimate or preferred uh, ultimate fan passes. Yes, um, but... and I think also interesting is that the Honda Center does operate like many other venues around the United States with a no-bag policy. So mm. I don't know how this is going to work logistically. I'm hitting the uh -huh. Expo Center. I'm buying the newest blank. What am I right. going to do with my bag? Will they I be mean, able to check your bags? Right. Uh. I mean, a lot of times I go all day at these things without retiring mm -hmm. because you want to kind of make the most out of all the money you're spending. So I don't know if you weren't staying right near the Anaheim Convention Center, like the Hilton or whatnot, 
that's going to be like a lot of lift fees. If you want to like take a lift back to your hotel, sure. drop your bag, come back, take the shuttle. So very interesting. But I mean, that bag policy is not going to be revoked because it's just, you know, that's a venue safety issue. Sure, sure. Um, well, that is an interesting question that I'm sure uh, it'd be fascinating to see how they address that. Um, but right. uh, hopefully it will be worth the bag hassle because they've got quite a lineup for those events at the Honda Center. Uh, as you mentioned, it's the first time they've done three nights of marquee events. Uh, first night on the 9th will be their entertainment showcase, uh, which is going to be uh, looks at the upcoming movies, TV shows, stage shows. August 10th is going to be Disney Experiences. So that's where we're going to see what's happening in the theme parks, the cruise ships and beyond. And then 11th is going to be the Disney Legends Ceremony. And wow, is this going to be a star-studded event? Yes, the lineup is nuts. Crazy. <laughs> Bananas. I mean, it's... And, you know, I got to say, all right, in case you don't know what a Disney legend is... Um, Disney legends are, it's a, a tradition going back almost 40 years. Um, Fred McMurray from uh, The Shaggy Dog was actually the very mm -hmm. first Disney legend back in 1987. Uh, but this honors uh, artists and visionaries who have been associated with the Disney company um, and have made an impact on the company. And I'll, I'll be honest, um, a number of the people on this list are probably only Disney legends because of things that uh, were purchased by the Disney company after the fact and were not actually necessarily working with or for Disney at the time they did the things that they're being honored for. Um, however, uh, because of corporate synergy, <laughs> these are all <laughs> Disney legends, darn it. Um, yes. and if I it's mean, an regardless excuse, of their A-list. <laughs> if it's an excuse to get these people on a stage together, I, I mean, like, I... I um, I mean, so, these are the kind of names I need if I'm going to be dropping thousands of dollars. To come <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. So uh, let's run through the list, uh, alphabetically speaking, um, starting with costume designer Colleen Atwood, uh, who is basically Tim Burton's uh, right hand man, right hand woman uh, on uh, winning an Oscar for uh, Alice in Wonderland um, and uh, she's working on Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Edward Scissorhands, you name it, uh, legend. Angela Bassett, um, uh, screen actress, everything from uh, Boys in the Hood to Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. Um, this one is really cool. Martha Blanding, who was the first black tour guide uh, to work permanently uh, at Disneyland. Um, a long, long time cast member, uh, 50 years with the resort. Um, Filmmaker James L. Brooks, uh, who you might know for uh, producing The Simpsons um, and Mary Tyler Moore Show and other amazing TV shows. James Cameron, director of Avatar. Titanic. Titanic, um, Terminator, True Lies. Speaking of True Lies, Jamie Lee Curtis, mm -hmm. uh, who, uh, of course, her Disney connection is the film Freaky Friday. Um, I doubt that they're honoring her for Halloween. Um, uh, Miley Cyrus, who yes. came to fame as Hannah Montana. Uh, excited to see them honoring Steve Ditko, who uh, not as famous a name as Stan Lee, but he was the co-creator of uh, a lot of really important Marvel characters. Um, uh, Harrison Ford, uh, who? Harrison, Harrison who? Yeah, Indiana yeah, Jones, it's just, and wow. Solo, <laughs> yeah. Um, Disney animator Mark Henn, uh, who started on Mickey's Christmas Carol. I love uh, and, that because that's such a classic for, you know, Disney fans. That... Yep, and worked all the way, uh, you know, through Moana, Big Hero 6, you name it. Um, Frank Oz, uh, Miss Piggy, Yoda, uh, the Muppets. Um, a, Little Shop of Horrors. A true legend. Yes. Um, Kelly Ripa uh, from uh, TV talk show fame. Uh, Joe Rohde, the legendary Imagineer behind uh, Animal Kingdom and many other projects. And uh, last but certainly not least, uh, iconic 
film composer John Williams. Uh, the the sound behind everything from Star Wars and Indiana Jones um, to Schindler's List. So right. I mean, I, he's like the soundtrack of our lives as Disney yeah. fans. <laughs> so uh, this is truly like they they always have a good lineup for these legend panels, but I think this has got to be the most stacked a list. Oh uh, yeah grouping that they've ever had um i really hope that this is broadcast uh on the internet for all of those who cannot attend uh you know they've they've simulcast some of this stuff in the past uh but some of these really big ticket items they don't uh so maybe someone can sneak in a, a camera and <laughs> I, yeah, I, mean, I, I don't know if everyone honest, tries live streaming I, at the same time it's gonna crash the to deal with going to the honda center during this i mean like yeah I, well, it you know, like a lot. yeah, I, 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 I will, this. I will be honest, like after the last D23 event that I attended in person, I kind of felt like I was going to stick with the, the YouTube uh, streams mm -hmm. uh, because I could see better. I could hear better. I, I can't afford the, uh, the top dollar to have a seat down front. Right. Um, you know, I would be sitting in the nosebleeds 400 section way in the back of the bowl. Um, so, uh, I kind of feel like I get a better view, uh, watching it at home on the internet. Right. And I will say, I still feel like the energy and excitement watching it from home oh, as attending yeah. without the hassle. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, well, okay. So the, uh, those big evening presentations though at the Honda center are just the, uh, cherry on the cake at the end of the evening. Um, they've also got, um, the uh, daytime events going on inside the convention center. Uh, they've got, uh, flipping back over to the other screen, uh, yes. so they have Pixar, Walt Disney Studios, Disney Plus, Lucasfilm. But what I am excited about is a brand new first of its kind exhibit from Walt Disney Archives, which is called A Great Big Beautiful Car Show. Yes. Uh, so I am assuming that this is going, they're going to be pulling vintage uh, vehicles. Uh, maybe picture cars from Disney films uh, or cars related to uh, Disney history um, and uh, letting them get, letting us get a look at them. Uh, yes, it, I, usually not, they'll, yeah. they'll pull up props or costumes or maybe an animatronic or two, uh, but cars, uh, that's, that's something different. Yeah, no, I, and I love the logo they designed for it. It's yeah. so like 1964 World's Fair. Absolutely. So I'm like, I, you pulled me in. Absolutely. Um, you're also going to be able to shop, of course. Uh, yeah, get ready to hold all those bags uh, full of <laughs> stuff that you get at Mickey's of Glendale, uh, the Hollywood Studio Store, and the Emporium um, with exclusive uh, D23 branded products. Um, and of course, there's going to be shows, panels, presentations, Q&As, uh, and all the details of those uh, are going to be released later. Um, but we do know that August fourth is going to be the first ever d23 day at angel stadium so if you're a baseball fan uh you and the first 23,000 other people coming through the gates will in will get a uh commemorative one of a kind or at least 23,000 of a kind d23 mickey mouse bobblehead hey i'd go just for that but then i yep <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just want the merch. <laughs> uh, another day that you're going to want to be aware of, whether you are attending D23 or not, August 8th, mark it on your calendar because it is the first ever D23 day at the Disneyland Resort. There's going to be a custom cavalcade, a dance party, music celebration uh, with at DCA, um, and photo opportunities. So if you are excited to celebrate D23, you want to be there on that day. Uh, if you want to have nothing to do with that, uh, be aware that will probably be a busy day in the park. Might be one yes. to avoid. And just based on this logo that they designed for it, I want the themed merchandise. <laughs> <laughs> um, D23 uh, ticket information. Here we go. Yeah. Um, so... If you want to be able to uh, both go during the daytime to the Anaheim Convention Center and have a reserved seat for the Honda Center, uh, you're starting. You're looking at a starting ticket of ninety-nine dollars for one day, or two ninety-seven for three days. 
Uh, if you want to sit down on the floor uh, level, um, a, a three-day ticket is going to start at a thousand dollars, and you're going to need to be a gold level member of D23 just to be able to purchase that. Um, yeah, it's a little confusing you, because the way they've named it is like if you just want the convention, it's called a fan pass. But when they yes. add ultimate to it. That includes the nighttime. So I was like, that's, yeah. I, it, I hate when they do things like that because it really, the, I think people are going to be upset yeah. when they realize you've, they don't have you've got your, they had. You've got your fan pass, your ultimate fan pass, and your preferred ultimate fan pass. Say that <laughs> 10 times fast. Um, yeah. Yes. If you just buy the fan pass, which is the bottom level, um, if you're a general D23 member, that's going to cost you 89 save ten dollars uh if you're a d23 gold member for a one-day pass but honestly you're only saving 10 or 20 bucks and you're missing out on the honda center i would i would i would think if you're going that far it's worth pe paying an extra 10 or 10 10 or 20 bucks to get to the right. Honda center if but uh, i mean got, like some people may not want to go you know that's what true I mean? like that's true so it's nice to have the, the option because, right because i'm thinking when that the events end at the honda center at night how long is it going to take for you to get back? It might be get out of there, walk. yes. So, that is, I mean, that is if very you just want to go on the floor and see all the things, but again, yeah, the, the price difference is like really minimal between that. So mm -hmm. I get it. Yeah. A three day fan pass starts at 259 for general members or 209 for gold members. Um, now, uh, if you want to attend, uh, you're going to want to jump on tickets as soon as they become available because they are limited now. in quantity. <laughs> uh, so uh, March 26th, which is the day after we are recording this, noon Pacific time is the kickoff for D23 Gold members who want to buy uh, one day or three day tickets. Uh, D23 General members uh, who have Visa cards uh disney visa cards um i'm uh they have a pre-sale starting on march 27th and the rest of d23 golden general members have their sale go on march 28th uh you have to be a, a d23 member of some level in order to purchase tickets but the basic membership is free you just got to go d23.com and sign up Yes, it's very a little confusing. So yes, <laughs> absolutely, one hundred percent. Yeah, look and at it now. Uh, uh, before, uh, and it's you know might be worth it if you uh, participate and enter the uh, Ultimate Disney Sweepstakes. Uh, they've got some fantastic prizes, uh, including a trip on the maiden vo voyage of that Disney treasure, uh, the upcoming Disney Cruise Line ship. Absolutely. Uh, that Sweepstakes runs July 8th through August 11th, and you actually don't have to purchase to win. Uh, just head on over to d23.com. Yes, I will say I do splurge on the gold membership each year. I love the magazine, but really the special events that they have for D23 gold members, like I got to go to the animation back lot and it was only $99. Yeah. Um, I mean, that was worth the membership alone. <laughs> uh, yeah. I would, one year, the year that I was uh, a gold member, I uh, did the studio tour um, mm -hmm. and 100% worth it. Honestly, I vacillate because uh, I find that I get the magazines and they sit there piling up because I never get around to reading them. Oh, I love uh, them. So I, they're very well done. They're very slick. Mm -hmm. They've got great photography. I just have such a pile of reading material mm -hmm. next to my bed. It's like, that's a mountain. Okay. Um, but uh, I basically join or not based on how cool I think the the and the the bonus box that you get for for membership yeah. is. Well, uh, some a, years I really love. They had a retro uh, box a few years back that I love with the flag. Yeah, 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 yeah. I have that that, yeah. that one I had to get. Yeah, it's, uh, it's really good sometimes. All right. Well, oh my gosh, uh, we hit this in just about an hour which is amazing i thought we would be here forever I mean, we had some meaty ones so yeah we had a lot of stuff to talk about uh but we got through it and it was so great getting to see you Yay! again it has been yeah. too long I know. Uh, what do you say we do it again next week Woo! i'm ready <laughs> before before we go though uh let us check in and see if we had any comments 
in the queue. And boy, it looks like we had quite a few comments in the queue. Uh, Michael Bingham's looking forward to that drone show. Uh, Eric O is amazed that he is as old as <laughs> Legoland, California. <laughs> yeah, oh, Eric, Eric, you're getting old, <laughs> just like the rest of us. <laughs> um, and uh, Vince Lamb, yes, I know it was another long news in the queue. Uh, he got back from class before the uh, main attraction. And thank you for appreciating my monthly uh, pipe mm -hmm. reference. Um, he's going to go ahead and buy the you're ultimate. Crazy, Eric. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> Uh, Noel Gonzalez checking in. Uh, he thinks that Kevin Feige is going to announce uh, at D23 Expo the Marvel Phase 6 Fantastic Four Blade, all a whole bunch of things. Uh, all right, your lips to Kevin's ears, Noel. Hope that happens for you. Um, uh, Entertainer1987 wants to know why Tom Hanks has not been honored as a Disney legend yet uh i do not know i don't have any insight is that true he's not a disney legend um i think maybe it's if they can ever get uh him and tom hanks yeah uh andrew brady also thing apparently tom hanks has a lot of friend fans out there who want him to be a disney legend so i don't know start a change.org pe petition maybe it right. <laughs> uh vince lamb wants to know if we're going to see a hup mobile at the <laughs> gravy maybe uh yeah neighbors neighbors help mobile um that's a, a carousel progress reference right um so uh and um michael bingham's also excited that d23 will be at the honda center and says go ducks also mm -hmm. even <laughs> and uh and he thinks that angel stadium is really cool even though he's not an angels fan um all right. Well, that about brings us to the end of another show. Before we go, we want to thank, as always, our sponsors, MEI and Mouse Fan Travel. And we want to ask you to please uh, hit like, hit subscribe, and please give us a rating and review over at Apple Podcasts or Spotify or wherever else you listen to us. Also, please follow us at attractionsmagazine.com and search for Attractions Magazine on your favorite social media platform speaking of which carly where can folks find you on the socials yes i am on instagram at adventures by carly and on x at carly Karama. and you can find me as always at s kuberski or at the unofficial guides and you can find my books at the unofficial guides.com and until next week, we hope you folks stay safe, try something new, and most importantly, have fun. We will see you next time. Bye. Bye.